Welcome to our video module on dynamics. Take a look around you. Choose a particular object within your field of vision. Maybe it's a button on your keyboard. Maybe it's a book. Maybe it's some object outside. Now imagine that you're going to give your eyes instructions on how to fix your gaze on that object. We tell it to focus a general distance. Then we say, based on where we're facing, move five degrees to the right, kind of like scan the horizon, and then maybe even go up and down, scanning up and down. Our interaction with our environment is fundamentally a polar experience. So if I wanted to describe where my keyboard is, where my keyboard button is, I say it's two feet away, 10 degrees to the right, five degrees down. If I'm trying to describe a book on a shelf, I'm not going to instruct my eyes to look three feet horizontally, two feet to the right, and two inches up. Yet we find with most types of motions identifying a rectangular coordinate frame is less cumbersome than using a polar coordinate frame. However, when we deal with objects that are rotating, this is one area where polar coordinates really shine. So we better brush up on them. So here we have a nice little comparison in white and yellow of rectangular and polar coordinates. This all should look very familiar. We've taken, say, some point A right here, and we've given it its um, rectangular coordinates and its polar coordinates. And likewise, we've written it down, say, how to find polar coordinates if you're given the rectangular, and how to find rectangular if you're given the polar. But we want more than that. We're used to dealing with vectors because of the power they give many of our equations of motion, and so we're familiar with the rectangular unit vector i and j here shown in teal. We'd like to do the same for polar coordinates and we define a unit vector, a radial unit vector that you can imagine goes from the origin to the point and an angular unit vector e sub theta that's perpendicular to e sub r. But we want to dig deeper than that. So let's scroll down and take a look at what we have. First in the rectangular coordinate frame we have unit vectors i and j, which are defined for all time horizontally and vertically. And of course, we also have the k-unit vector. We can also define the unit vector in the polar coordinate system. er is equal to whatever the position vector is to point a, divided by the magnitude of that position vector. Likewise, this is one of my, one of my favorite little equations, is the unit vector in the theta direction is perpendicular to that in the r direction, so k cross the radial unit vector. These two terms define the unit vector for polar coordinates. Now, it's interesting to note that the i and j unit vectors are the same for all time, no matter what points we're looking at. However, radial and angular unit vectors change depending on where the particle is. This is part of the reason why a polar coordinate frame works really well when you're working with circles, not so well when you're dealing with other types of trajectories or paths. Now finally, let's pretend for a moment that we have this particle and it's restricted to the orange section. It's restricted to some circular path around the origin. In which case, if we wanted to define what the coordinates could be in the rectangular coordinate frame, we'd say it's equal to some r times cosine theta i plus some r sine theta j. And that would define all those points. It's rather cumbersome. If we wanted to do the same thing in polar coordinates, we'd simply say r equals r e r. This rather simplifies matters. In summary, We've defined our unit vectors in polar coordinates. We've also reviewed that we like polar coordinates better. In other words, they're simpler, less cumbersome when we're dealing with circular motion. And as a general rule, we like the rectangular coordinates when we're dealing with most other types of motions. As I said earlier, the coming chapters deal a lot with rotation, so we better get familiar with this. We'll continue more of our discussion in our next video when we talk about velocity.